Hello there. Uh, this is very strange. This is a Xerox 645S memory writer. Not quite a typewriter. It's a word processor. However, uh, it seems like it was previously used as a typewriter, but we'll look at that in a moment. This thing is enormous and huge and dumb, and I have passed on so many word processors at uh, thrift stores and Goodwills, which is where this thing came from. But there was one distinguishing feature that drew my attention, and that is the dual five and a quarter inch floppy drives on the bottom. Now I've seen a ton of typewriters with three and a half inch drives on them for saving documents and things like that. But this thing has five and a quarter inch drives and it has to boot from them. I don't have the boot disc and there aren't any backups of it online. So I don't really know how I'm ever gonna get this thing to work unless someone happens to have one or one shows up on eBay. But for now, I kinda wanna just tear it apart and see what makes it tick. So today, we're gonna look inside this thing and see what it has going on. Now, I want to give you an idea of just how massively monstrous this thing is. I mean, aside from the fact that it's super heavy and has a single pad on the bottom ugh, for vibration dampening. Uh, one thing I think would be fun to compare it against here uh, is my HP 85, which I kind of consider to be a larger system, but it absolutely dwarfs it. <laughs> it's, it's not even comparable. This is a whole computer with a printer and the key keyboard built in, as well as a tape drive and a CRT. This thing's just a keyboard and a printer. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So uh, it does actually make it awesome though. So that's part of why I think it's so cool and I would like to get it going. So this is a 645S as I mentioned. And uh, from what I've done as research on this, that means that there is some unique features of this thing. And one of them is that it does not have a screen here. Now I think the, 625s may but uh this doesn't have that and the sticker is actually peeling up and i'm half tempted to try and take a peek under there but uh, some of the lower end models do have a display here this one doesn't and note that i called the other models low end if we spin it around you can see down here there is actually a little insert right there um <laughs> And uh, I think that's a display card. I don't know what's on it, but that's the first thing that I want to look at because it's nine pin. I think this thing came with an MDA type monitor initially, except I know that it's not MDA uh, because the monitor gets power over this connector as well. So it probably has 12 volts or something going to it. So we can't just willy nilly hook up a monitor. I want to pull it out and see what it is. I'm hoping that the same CRTC chip from the IBM PC is in there because then I might be able to actually custom pin a connector to an MDA monitor, but uh, we won't know until we get in there. People frequently say, why didn't typewriters evolve before computers came out? And the thing is they did, this is what they became. But these enjoyed such a very narrow window of relevancy that they were, no one remembers them. That's, that's what it is, so. Now what I'm hoping to find on this card is um, a standard MDA display controller or just monochrome in general, really. Um, because I'm hoping that I can adapt it to something that takes uh, horizontal and vertical sync signals. Oh, wow, I thought this was gonna be like a whole card. It's just a panel with the video signal. Am I gonna have to, we're gonna have to really get in there, it seems. Okay, um, there is not a whole lot going on there. It's just uh, a metal plate, huh? Uh, we gotta figure out how to get into it though. So, yeah. You know, one thing I haven't done is turn it on and show you guys how much it does not do. <laughs> and uh, talk about that weird note. Let's go ahead and do that really quick. <laughs> so it does just take normal IEC C13, pin towards the bottom, boom. And you flip the switch, it makes a whole mess of noises. Okay. Both floppy drives tried to access, all right. 
Now, unfortunately, I really can't make it do a whole lot. The keyboard, completely ignored. Um, this button changes the line spacing, cool. Pretty much every other button makes it double beep. Uh, stop doesn't, single beep. Ooh, it looked like set tab was single beep too. Yep, exciting. But that's it, because when it tries to turn on, it tries to read the operating system off of those floppy drives. It can't do anything. It is working fine if I turn it off and then push the carriage over, which is really, really hard. This thing has an insane amount of force to it. Um, then it will move it over. So it works and it can home and things like that. The manual says something to the effect of push this and then this, um, and then it should enter like normal typewriter mode and it, it doesn't work. So I do have this thing, which is a reference card for it. And it says to turn type right on or off and type right is the feature for making it function as a typewriter. Press and hold the left features key, press and hold the right features key. Tone will beep when typewriter is turned on. No tone indicates typewriter has been turned off. But I think this is assuming that you have booted the operating system disk. Now, I know for sure that it needs an operating system disk without even having read the manual because I got this note in it that is unfortunately written in cursive, but it says, to use typewriter, turn on insert base system disk on left side. Wait, then insert uh, something disk number two in the right drive. Do not shut off machine with disks in, which is hilarious because we talk about that a fair bit when imaging the eight inch disks. But basically it's saying to even use it as a typewriter, uh, you have to do that. And I'm guessing because they have the note written there that the monitor that should be attached right here and hanging off there has been separated for quite some time. I haven't tried putting just a random disk in there. Um, we could do that. Like how about my FreeDOS disk? It said, what, in the left drive? Uh, on left side, yeah. So let's try putting an MS-DOS-ish boot disk in there. So just for giggles, here you go. Five and a quarter inch disk going into a typewriter. Here's the latch, boom. I can hear it spinning, which makes me think it's more Shugart-like. Oh, went off, all right. Um, I don't, I don't know that there is like a, a reboot option, but how about this? No, okay. Where's control alt delete on my typewriter? Well, they say turn it on and then put it into the disc. So that's an interesting thing. What happens if I pull the disc out, put it back in? I hear it spinning, it's redetecting the disc. I don't think there's any indicator lights on it at all. I'm guessing it's telling me non-system disk replace with system disk on the display. Yeah, I think we need to get a monitor solution here before we can really start messing around with it because without that, we don't know what it's trying to display or what it's trying to tell us. So if we have any hope at all of getting it to boot something, we're gonna need the disk or the monitor, so. Um, I see some Phillips screws on the top for the back. So let's start there. Archive.org for the software. Yeah, neither Archive.org nor BitSavers have copies of the software. I'm not sure that BitSavers has software, actually. There's no way it's gonna be that easy. Oh, I don't like your stuff making sounds inside now. <clears throat> Is it just getting it over the... Ow! Pinched my fingers. Holy moly, that's a lot of stuff going on in there. Whoa. Okay, uh, we got a whole lot of things. <laughs> Welcome to my S100 typewriter. <laughs> hmm, so this front board here, that one's a little different. Where's this going? This goes to the middle board. Okay, so we need to, <laughs> we need to take out the, uh, the middle card here to see what our monitor would connect to. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. It's way more interesting than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> there probably is an 8085 or something like that. I was kidding about it being S100, but it's definitely some kind of backplane system. Uh, I see down here, it looks like it probably has some kind of 
8-bit uh, data bus that everything's connected to. So there will be something. Wow, look at how look how well designed the routing is for those cables. That's just pretty, man. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna try and lift it out into the side. So I'll flip that over like that. Here, this is the display board and I wanna take this one out to get a peek at it as well. I'm just gonna have to kinda pull up more connectors here. We have a Hitachi control chip uh, along with some Toshiba drivers. I really like the look of the controller thing here. Whoa, hold on, we got more bus. Whoa, there's a lot more going on down in there. So I just have, you know, like an MDA card around like you normally would. Uh, this one has an MC6845. So what I need to know is if the part here is compatible with that, or at least to know what the output might be. Okay, so if we look at this uh, PDF up here, we can see uh, as we go down, this here is the chip uh, that it is. So it's a 6845SP equivalent. The Motorola chip on the MDA card is this, a 6845P, but those are both one megahertz CRT controller chips. So it's very possible I could connect an MDA monitor to this thing. I just have to figure out what the pinout is here, uh, which is going to be slightly tricky, but uh, now that I know that it is at least a somewhat compatible interface controller, uh, I can start trying to figure out what the uh, pinout is of the connector. So we might actually be able to see something here. So I'm just going to unplug this so that we can poke around on there before we get into it. But I kind of want to keep digging a little here and see what else we can figure out. So, okay, on this layer of chip, we have a WDC chip there, which I could see being the CRT controller, but, or CRT floppy controller, but it would make more sense for that to be it. But it seems like that's probably CPU. So let's keep going here. So on this card, we have uh, an Intel 8237A, P8237A. This is a WDC FD193PL. That sounds an awful lot like a floppy controller right there. That looks like RAM for sure. Um, this thing is a TMS 4500A. Man, it's got a lot of big complicated chips in it. Uh, what's on the last one? Let's just, uh, let's get there. Oh my gosh, it's an 8088. <laughs> it's literally a PC. That is amazing. Okay. Wow. So this would be the bios. We have to dump that. Uh, we're dumping that. <laughs> wow. Okay. So we have an Intel 8088, uh, D8088-2. All right. FreeDOS when? I mean, I put the FreeDOS disk in it and it didn't work. So it's not just gonna boot PC like that, but uh, wow. So we have plus 32, plus nine, plus five, and plus 12 on the power supply. All right, let's get, uh, let's get a ROM read. Uh, how much RAM? Probably not a lot. So these are gonna be 4164s. Uh, they are indeed 16 4164 chips. I don't know what that works out to. See, 128K of RAM? Are you serious? <laughs> That's so much RAM. So uh, we're going for Mini Pro. It's been a little while since I used it. Uh, so I got to remember how here. All right, we got a ROM dump. I'm going to quickly uh, just open that and see what we've got here. Boom, here we go. We can do this. So do we have any identifiable information in here? So far, no. It looks like it's all... Ah, that looks text-like. I don't think there's a lot of strings in there. Let's see. Strings, Xerox, uh, yeah, nothing really legible. It might be something strange like an interleaved ROM or weird stuff. I don't know. 
Oh, well, there's, it's not like there's two of them, but yeah, I don't know. So, okay. We got that backed up. I did my archivist's duty. So we have that saved. I will upload that later. Boom, okay. Let's just take pictures of all the boards. That way uh, I can just have a better record of everything. This is more just reference material. I'm not trying to have enough information like reverse engineer this. So, oh yeah, that's plenty good. The RAM board, um, this is a TMS 4500A. I don't know what that is offhand. Let's look it up. So that's a RAM controller. That's all that is. And it's another set of mask ROMs, I think. Good grief, how much ROM does it need to still have to boot off of a floppy disk? Definitely glad I picked this thing up, it's fascinating. So, um, let's look this up, because I didn't look it up before. It's, it seems like the most obvious chip in the world. A WDC FD, a 1793, PL's got to be a floppy disk controller. It's a floppy disk controller. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. FDC um, right there. Intel chip, but with AMD markings? What? It's an Intel chip with AMD. It's got both Intel and AMD copyrights or insignias on the same chip. I have never seen that before. That is super weird. Oh, what if that's an AMD part that Intel licensed? So, like, it's... AMD designed it. Yeah, because that one's got Intel. That one's also slightly out of focus. That's a, a mild problem. I might reshoot this. Yeah, that one's Intel with Intel as the copyright holder, but that one's Intel with AMD as a copyright holder. I wonder if maybe that's an AMD chip that Intel licensed. Well, what was the bottom one? I didn't even pay attention. That's an 8080. Wait, that's an 8085? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, it has an 8085AH on it, too. <laughs> How many CPUs does this typewriter need? <laughs> I didn't even pay attention the first time. That's an 8085. <laughs> so the only thing it doesn't have is a Z80. <laughs> All right, on to the next card. This is the uh, display controller, the, the MDA card, basically. So there's that card. The last card that interfaces to everything else. Let me just do that one real quick. It's found several daisy wheels. Oh yeah, I was gonna show you real quick. Um, yeah, you just yeah, come over here, pull this back, pops right up, and uh, oh, it's you literally just pull out the wheel. Okay, so yeah, there's the daisy wheel. So it's got Courier Italic on in it right now. You see it's in being in like uh, some kind of carrier. Ooh, that's interesting. It must have a sensor to know what kind it's got. Why are those metal? It needs to know if there's a monospace font or not. Oh my gosh, if it does, proportional type spacing. I hadn't even considered that. This thing is probably awesome. <laughs> I hope I can get video out of it, but we'll never get it working. Because uh, no um, operating systems. Oh yeah, there's something I didn't mention here. So, this is weird. So if I move the whole carriage, which is difficult because it is incredibly tight, stiff, high torque, however you want to think about it, it's got this thing in it. There's like this weird extra module that has a Xerox brand on it, but I swear it's like somebody installed a key logger in here because you can unplug this which goes to the main board, unplug this, separate out this module, and then plug the keyboard right back in. And when I did that, the, the push buttons up at the top that uh, control like the stuff and make it beep still worked. So I don't know what this thing is. <laughs> it just goes in between the keyboard and the system and does something? I don't know. It's a piece of uh, vacuum formed plastic that just goes over a circuit board. Microlytics UFO Systems Xerox Corp. Uh, 1985 copyright dates on there. Yeah, an Intel 8031AH. <laughs> that sounds like an 8051 clone type thing. 
or predecessor. I'll get a picture and then I'll really quickly post all of these to Twitter. For those of you who want to look stuff up, you can get access to these where I upload them to like archive.org or whatever. Uh, there is a patent for spell check module by Microlytics, UFO, and Xerox. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. See, I meant that this module right there is probably a spelling check module. Oh, that would be super weird, but that would explain the beeper. All right, let's get a picture of this thing. Spell checker would make sense. That, that would also make sense why it needs so much ROM, because if it's if it's got a bunch of that stuff, these are soldered to the board, so that's uh, that's not very easy to pull off. Okay, so we have a later brochure. Let's uh, let's look at this real quick. Xerox 645S, all right. The weird module, that's typewrite. Typewrite is, uh... oh no, that's spelling. Never mind. We, we already figured that out. Okay, hold on. We, we uh, you guys nailed that. Go to capture. Okay, I thought typewrite was um, making it work as a typewriter, but here, typewrite. This checks for correct spelling on pretty much all of them. Uh, typewrite provides yada yada, it checks for proper spelling, fixes it as you type. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's typewrite. Okay. So, the display controller is this thing, and it would make sense to try and, like, go from the CRT controller looking at the data sheet, which I did find, uh, and try and go to the port. All right, I need to do continuity check here to test where power is going to and what power potentially is. So, uh, this whole thing is power. Some of these will be ground. There's clearly a ground plane. So whatever that is. So that's our power for the monitor. So okay, let's turn it on. Let's figure out what that is. So there to there, that's 16-ish volts. Okay. Not ground. Ground! Not ground. Not ground, not ground, not ground, ground, not ground, ground. Okay, so ground, second. Okay. That's more than I, fewer than I would have guessed, actually. Um, I really want to double check that a bit more here. Yeah, that's really it. Okay, power. Okay. First bottom row, second bottom row. So we have four signals, I guess. So now let's figure out which ones are which on here. Here's the line I think is H-Sync, okay? Here is the one I think is V-Sync. And the thing is, that's AC, here's DC. Um, can we make it less weird? What gives? There we go, negative DC V-Sync, all right. And then the one I think is video. All right, we get a whole bunch of bumping up and down. I think your scope needs switches and pots cleaned. This looks like it like looks different now. I'll tell you what the difference is, I stopped connecting ground. <laughs> That's what I did. I stopped connecting ground. <laughs> and I think I may have a better handle on DC? I'm not sure. Uh, 50, or okay, we're doing, we're, do, we're slamming this into MDA. I'm convinced it's MDA. Let's do it. Okay, I need to swap H-Sync and video on my pinout back here. HS and V. That's, that's, more, that's what I'm going with. I don't know what that pin is that pin is huh, huh that pin's not connected <laughs> i think we're about to crack the video i can pull the m deck out of here because we're not going to be using that for mda i have an actual mda monitor we'll use actually no we're going to use the dell monitor with the thingamajig the the mcd mce to vga because i think that's less likely to explode i have both kinds of db9 d sub 9 whatever you want to call them connectors here uh should probably just cut the line we're, no we're gonna make a cable we're gonna make an adapter make a this dumb memory writer to mda adapter that's why that's how i'm gonna roll here all right so we're gonna take one of these and we're gonna take one of these and we're gonna do this thing 
Okay, vertical. Done. Horizontal is this. Okay, that should theoretically be a memory writer to MDA adapter. All right, let's see if this works. I have the Dell monitor behind my laptop, and we're gonna see if the video just shows up on there when I uh, get it all connected. So, uh, here's what I'm doing. This is going to the MCE2 VGA adapter, which is plugged into my Extron splitter, which should connect to that thing. Then we have this going into there. That should be video going into the things. So I'm gonna fire it up and we'll see what happens. Boom. Beep. That uh, did something. That looks an awful lot like video to me. Uh, we are close. What is going on? Why is it like horribly missynced? Let me see, on-screen OSD V position. Oh, we are so close. Key. Hmm, 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 hmm. We're very, very close to something doing a thing. It didn't blow it up. All right, let's connect it to an analog uh, monitor, a, a proper CRT and see what it does. Plug this in and Boom. Okay. Nope, the horizontal sink is weird, it looks like. Or vertical sink. This thing does not like it. I feel like this thing is probably multi-mode. It's as close as I'm gonna get. So I bet there's something else weird going on. <laughs> Uh, the Dell is not actually doing the video. Down here, um, you see this white box? This is a uh, MDA CGA EGA to VGA adapter. So this thing is getting the MDA signal in and then converting it to VGA and then being sent to this thing. So whatever this, this is just getting 640 by 480 at 60 Hertz. The other thing is doing all the magic. The thing is, is this is using a standard CRTC controller IC. So the video should be somewhat standard for MDA, but we don't know if it's getting the same clock timings or any of that stuff. So I think that's probably as good as I'm gonna be able to get for right now. Uh, what's frequency of the crystal on board? That's a good question. It's kind of buried in there. 18 megahertz, that, that's, a, that's a thing. Uh, that's meaningless to me. So it's 18.432 megahertz. That's a lot of megahertz. You know what I wanna do? I wanna put a disc in, just a random disc. Let's go with a uh, free DOS. See if anything changes on the screen when it's in there. You know what, I don't think it's trying to access it, or is it the right drive? I don't remember now. Before it was trying to access it. Something has changed. Oh, look at chat, oh, uh, hold on. Look at the screen, what? What about, what at the screen? No, he didn't see it? Wait, what? It worked? What? Okay, let's look at this text clip here. Whoa, it looks like there's text. <laughs> Is there really text? Oh my gosh, there was text! What? <laughs> there was life! How do I get that back? I want that back. I want it to live. But I'm gonna pay attention to this thing this time, all right? Removing disc, all right, off, on. Okay, it seeked one, it seeked two, waiting. 
Okay, putting in the disk, closing it, it's accessing it. I don't press a key while there's a disk in there. No. Oh my gosh, what is it gonna? Beep, beep. Text! <laughs> Insert instruction disk. Oh, I think what happened is I pressed buttons on the, okay, I know what happened. Okay, so I pressed these buttons here and that's what brought it up. But that's text, that's showing something. We did it, we got video. Yes! <laughs> it didn't boot, but who cares? That's success! It is awful, it's horrible, it's sinking terribly. But we did it! Let's let's do this all in one uh, here. So I'm gonna turn it off. You can kinda see both things there. Off, on, all right. Video will come on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press one of the soft touch uh, bubble keys on the front, boom, text. <sighs> yes. So what I can do is I can kind of poke around and see if anyone has any of the memory writer series typewriters and see if anyone who has one can scan a disc or image a disc and then try and make that uh, with any of them rather than try and go for one that just seems like it might be close. Oh, out of curiosity, This is a 16.25 megahertz crystal. That is the same footprint. Well, all right. Uh, I wasn't able to get this thing booting because, I mean, I don't have an operating system that was known going into this, but we got video working, which I really feel is a significant uh, achievement here because the reality is that I might actually be able to find a floppy disk for this thing on eBay at some point, or maybe a compatible one will show up and get imaged at some point, but I will probably never be able to find a CRT for this thing because let's be real, how likely is a random Xerox CRT gonna be that I find or someone else finds and throws up on eBay and they know that it goes with one of these. It's, it's, it's really just not gonna happen, but uh, with that, I actually have a real chance of using this thing at some point in the future, which is just awesome because it is still crazy and super cool. And I may explore that option of uh, potentially moving an MDA uh, clock crystal over to the vo video board on there because that could potentially allow it to work with something like this, even though it didn't work. It was really close. It, it's clearly just a slight sync mismatch. The uh, Monotech MCE to VGA adapter that I'm using for this is designed to interface with more devices. So it's basically the equivalent of a multi-sync monitor. That's how it's able to lock on. So yeah, but uh, that is really impressive. Uh, I, this thing is way crazier than I thought it was gonna be. So uh, that was fun to look through it and uh, see how all this is working. So if you enjoyed this video, you may want to subscribe. And if you wanna help support the channel, I am on Patreon. But for now, that's it. And I will see you next time.